Is uh, Silky Carlo joins me, director of Big Brother Watch UK. Uh, Silky, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, how worried should we be by the amount of data and the use of data uh, that, that Facebook have on us, and the fact that they seem to be quite happy uh, not to monitor who it's going to? Very worried, uh, and, and you know we've been very worried about this for some time. And if there's one good thing that comes out of this expose, it's that now everyone can see Facebook for what it essentially is, which is a global for-profit surveillance machine. Um, and, it, you know, it absolutely follows that, of course, then when you sell data, you know, information about our personal lives to the highest bidder, uh, you know, this is the kind of exploitation that you end up with. Um, but it's nothing new, is it? Well, look at look true. at credit agencies like Experian. They, they they do exactly the same thing. They're using information that they've got on us to sell to other companies. Yeah, you're you're right. And uh, the way that Experian uh, collects millions of people's data is also something that I expect we will be scrutinising more in, in due course. But there is something you know particularly insidious about the way that Facebook collects data. I mean, it's one of the most powerful data collectors in the whole world. It has 2.2 billion profiles, and it collects data on people who aren't even on the platform. It connects that information with offline data as well, whether it's financial data. Uh, web tracking data, and then it looks into and it has the potential to look into, and, and so do these third parties like Cambridge Analytica, um, not only to that surface information, but to actually deeply analyse the information and assess things like psychological traits and vulnerabilities, which are then exploited for you know, advertising or political influencing. So the stakes are you know, clearly really high here, and where a democratic process is involved really couldn't be higher. So what, what do you expect Facebook to do? Because they're, they're not, leopards don't change their spots. They, they've obviously developed a hugely successful operation. Um, nobody's expecting them to stop collecting data, are they? And, and we give them permission to do so, of course. I think yes and no. I think, you know, legally, uh, I think, which is what they'll try to argue, we give them permission to an extent. But I, I think in... Well, we do give them permission the word, by ticking the boxes. Yeah, I, I think people just don't know. People just don't know. It's ne the, the picture has never been painted before of just how much information Facebook has on you know, a good, significant portion of actually a whole population. And, and this is, this is the, the thing. There is a much, much bigger picture here. You know, it's not only the Cambridge Analytica's of the world, but it's Facebook itself, which is why I have such a high degree of scepticism of, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg promising to somehow kind of revolutionize the platform. It's just, you know, it's not going to happen. He said that the ad model is still going to be in place, which means that data is still for sale. Um, and the, the thing that I'm really interested in is the power that Facebook has itself with the billions of profiles that it has. You know, if it wants to start um, micro-targeting, influencing, manipulating people in line with its own political or commercial interests or those of the government's, uh, that it is pressurised by, then that would be an extraordinarily powerful thing and we would have okay. very little way of knowing about it. Are you on Facebook? No. <laughs> well, at least you're consistent. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am. Uh, Silky Carlo, thank you very much. Silky's director of Big Brother Watch UK.